Welcome. Thank you for coming here. Uh, last talk of the day, so I think you're all the diehards. Really glad you're here. Um, first, let me briefly introduce myself. My name is Jaap Komans. I live in Tilburg in the Netherlands, and I work as a Java developer, software architect for Group 9. And outside work, I have a family, a uh, father and husband, and um, I love to play board games, and with those board games, I like to drink uh, good, uh, good beer. But enough about me. You're here for the microservices, so let's talk about the microservices. Um, you see a microservice here. You can tell because it's a hexagon, so it must be a microservice. Um, but they're never alone. They always have friends. This one has three friends. Service B, C, and D. And our project continues, so we have more friends. There's E, F, and G is even a mutual friend. And of course, that will extend. And after a while, even though you're solving some yeah, not too big problems, you may end up with quite a complex landscape of microservices. And at some point in time, you or one of your colleagues will ask, but how are we going to test this? There's lots of complexities in, uh, in this landscape. And uh, of course, we need to take all the dependencies into account uh, when testing. How are we going to manage that? So to answer that question, I'm going to make a big change to this diagram. All the hexagons will become rectangles. And now suddenly, it's a class diagram. And then the answer to the question, how are we going to test this, uh, is very clear to a lot of people. Because if now I say, OK, we need to test class A, how are we going to do that? A little battle begins. Which mocking framework to work, to use? So I personally prefer Mockito, but there's also people into PowerMock or EasyMock. And if you're doing Kotlin, uh, you might like uh, MockK. And here it's a little bit in our standard tool set as a developer. So we do unit tests and we do mocking and we know all of that. So we're fine there. So returning to the problem, how would that look? Well, that would look a little bit like this. So we set A, the, the class on the test in the center, and we surround it by mocks. And that's our test scope. So can we do that for microservices as well? Well, of course we can. So here you see a similar setup, but instead of classes, we're now talking about microservices. And we have mocked microservices. So that's where mock server comes in. What is mock server? Mock server is a tool that can mock any HTTP service. Of course, uh, in this case, it's most likely a REST service, but you might just as well mock out uh, a web server. I don't know why you would want to do that, but it's a possibility. It's an open source tool by James D. Bloom. And he's uh, actively maintaining it, but as an aside, it appears he's mo uh, mostly the, the single maintainer. So if you're uh, into uh, risks, that might be a risk. It's, uh, where, where, where it's really different than most of its contenders, it runs as a separate process. And that makes it interesting for uh, mocking at a higher level of tests where most other tools that allow you to mock REST services run inside the test process. Uh, this is really uh, separate. And you can instruct mock server using a Java client API, giving you similar behavior as, as your standard uh, mocking framework. So what, what can you do using the client API? You can set expectations. Define the mock behavior, so if I get this, I want that to be returned. Uh, you can verify the interaction, so you can see, has this endpoint been called with these headers, uh, uh, that method. And you can also even 
inspect what has been sent to the mock. So, okay, it's nice that the endpoint has been called, but what did I send there? Is it actually the JSON uh, document that I expected? And you can then yeah, go as deep as you want. So why use mock server? Well, it helps you to test microservices in isolation. And that means that you can reduce your dependencies on other teams, because mostly when people are doing microservices in their company, uh, there's also multiple teams involved. And the first thing that you will notice is that teams will either be assigned ownership of a set of services or take ownership, but one way or the other, there's always that other team that you depend on. And if it's the microservice you're working on, depending on the microservice maintained by another team that's slowing down or isn't really clear on things where they're going, you too have a problem. And by uh, adding uh, mocks in place in your, in your test environment, you can use those mocks to at least test the microservice you're developing without really being dependent of the other team. Of course, it's very useful to have a contract uh, about uh, the interface between your microservices, but if you have that, you're not dependent on their implementation or their speed of implementation. Also, the tool is really easy to run, both locally and on the build server, which makes it really useful. So can you, you can run your tests locally to quickly loop through your feedback cycle, and you can also run the same test on your build server for more formal validation of your, uh, your uh, software. Then, uh, what I personally find really attractive, uh, because it's a separate process, you can set up an infrastructure in your tests that's a little bit similar, or mostly similar, to the actual uh, network infrastructure you will have in production. You actually have different processes running as separate microservices. Some are real, some are mocks, but it's the same as in production. So where would I personally position mock server? Of course, there's, there's more possibilities, but this, this is how I used it in, uh, in two of my projects previously. This is a classic test pyramid. So what you have at the very bottom, unit tests. Then depending on your project, you might have a layer of unit integration tests where you say, okay, I'm uh, testing my full REST layer here or my full persistence layer here as a whole. Uh, that's not where I personally position mock server. It's a level above that. I call it component test. Other people may have different names for it. And um, what you do there is test your server, uh, your service completely built. So for instance, I prefer Docker. My service will be a fully built Docker container and then I will run my tests on it. So it's really representative for what's going to production. It's the exact same Docker image that I will eventually deploy on my servers and uh, run in production. And that's where uh, mock server, in my opinion, comes in handy. And then, of course, you also have integration tests above that for testing real integration patterns uh, with more real implementations and then smoke tests or whatever you call them to test the, the main line of your process. So there's quite some ways to run mock server. And and I think there's some, something there for uh, anyone's liking. First of all, there's the Java API, so you can start and stop it programmatically, leaving you in charge of the life cycle, also leaving you with the issues to cope with the life cycle. Then there's a Maven plugin that will start mock server for you, run your tests, and then tear it down. There's a JUnit 4 rule that does more or less the same, but then uh, for JUnit 4 specifically. You can run the command line, which is a really interesting option because anything, any tool you use, any build server 
that allows you to execute command line uh, stuff. You can in integrate it in at a very low level if there's no default integration for that. And you can also run it as a deployable war. And if you're into front-end stuff, you can uh, run it using an NPM module or a Grunt plugin. And finally, my personal favorite, a Docker container. So there's a ready-made Docker container for a mock server that you can use out of the box. Uh, if you're into Kubernetes, there's even Helm charts for that. So uh, you're really good there. So that allows you to do something like this. Say I'm running my services on Kubernetes. Then uh, I can deploy my uh, service there and define a nice Kubernetes service for it and deploy a couple of instances of mock server for its dependencies. And then I can run my test against that. And you can do the same locally with Docker Compose, which to the service at hand looks more or less the same. If you're using uh, a Docker network, it's pretty similar. Of course, there's a lot of uh, differences below the surface, but your, your, your uh, software will not really notice. So that makes it a pretty representative test. Of course, it's never fully representative, but this will uh, get you rid of uh, a lot of obvious uh, problems. So let's, good, let's uh, look at uh, an example. And the example is based on the game of Mastermind. Is there somewhere, someone here that's not aware of the rules of Mastermind? One, okay, Oh, even more. So uh, I'll briefly go through it. It's a really simple game. Uh, you get to choose, it's two players. One player gets to choose a coat uh, of four pins of different colors and will hide it for the other player. And the other player get, uh, gets 10 guesses. And every time he places the same types of pins and the player that uh, thought of the code will answer with either black or white pins. Black pin meaning right color, right position. White pin meaning right color, wrong position. And uh, you get 10 guesses. If you don't have it, you lose. Uh, if you have the right code, you win. It's simple as that. But of course, uh, we're doing microservices here. So it wouldn't be real good microservice solution if it was just mastermind, so we're going to do over-engineered mastermind. And over-engineered mastermind is a really cool, uh, really cool application. You can play against the computer, so uh, you don't need to worry about other people. And uh, there's, of course, the mastermind UI that gives you a nice shiny UI to uh, guess the codes and get some insight into where you are in the standings and the rankings of all your competitions that you have. For these competitions, there's a tournament service, uh, but the beef is in the game service. That holds the state of every game that's being played. And the tournament service, obviously doing completely different things, needs a separate service. Uh, also, the code generator, yeah, well, yeah, we're not sure about what type of generation we want to use, so we want to be able to replace that really easily. Maybe different generators for different clients, so that must be a separate uh, microservice. And uh, yeah, the code checker. There's so many checking going on, we need to scale that separately, so that also deserves a separate microservice. So this is actually my test setup that I made. Um, you see, I'm using JUnit 5 and test containers for orchestration. Um, and then I actually built the game service and the rest I was both too lazy to build. And uh, I'm trying to make a point here. So I didn't build the other services. So let's step through some code of the tests. First of all, uh, this is more test containers than it is really mock server. But uh, what you see here is I'm uh, setting up a mock server uh, container. And um, well, there's a native integration for that with test containers. So if you're into test containers, you're really good. Uh, it says uh, use my local network and give it an alias generator. 
then, of course, I do that three times for the three different uh, dependencies. And then I create my own service. I build it uh, from my Docker file. And what you see here, uh, test containers will uh, run an instance of my, uh, of my game service. And it will inject three environment variables, uh, the URLs to the other services so I can find them. And what you will notice here, they all use the same port. So 1080 is the default port of mock server. And since I'm running this all on a local network, uh, Docker network, and they all have their aliases, that works out. So that's why I'm using it like this. Then, of course, I say, use my local network. But I also say, expose port 8080 to my host, because my test is not running in the Docker network. My test is running on my host. So my test must be able to connect to uh, my service for testing, of course. Then there's uh, some boilerplate. I initialize all the clients for mock server, which I actually treat in my test code as the mock, because uh, you will see that later. They're quite similar in API as your familiar mock framework. So I have a generator mock, a checker mock, and a tournament mock. And uh, also there, because this is mock server client running for my test, I need to connect through localhost to the uh, randomly chosen server port. And then uh, I need to reset my mocks before every test runs. I think you might recognize that from your favorite uh, mocking framework. It does that too. Now here we finally get to mock stuff. So before I run my actual test, I'm going to check, uh, set up a mock for my checker service. In this case, uh, I say when I get a request of method post with an accept header of application JSON on path slash check, then respond with uh, uh, header content type application JSON uh, status 200 and with a body that I create in some other method. So this is really simple, and I can extend it with many more headers, cookies, stuff. And the more specific you get, both in the when and in the response, the more specific mock server will behave. If I just say, uh, get me anything on slash check, it will do that for get, for post, whatever. But if I add more details, it will uh, be more specific at where it responds to. Now I executed my test code, and later on I want to verify what happened. So here uh, I want to be sure that my checker mock was, uh, was actually called. So I verify that I got a request, a post request, with an accept header of application JSON on path slash check. And here too, the more specific I am, the more specific the verification will be. So if you don't care about the headers, but just about the interaction patterns, just use the path and the method, and that's it. If there's really uh, importance in certain cases to check for cookies or whatever, you can, and you can do that here as well. Then I also want to check that my other mocks haven't been called, because during the game, I don't want my uh, tournament service to get a call for whatever. And also, I don't want to generate a new code during the game. That's really confusing. Um, so I do verify zero interactions, which coincidentally is exactly the same as for uh, Mokito, for instance. Then, as I said before, you can also inspect what you really send there. So what you see here, I'm uh, retrieving the recorded requests. Uh, in this case, for method put on the path slash games slash something slash result. So you see here, I'm using a regex to match anything that uh, has slash games in the beginning and slash result in the end. So obviously, there's some ID in between there. I'm not interested in ID. I just care that something uh, that something was called there, and I want to know what went there. 
So then I'm uh, using a really simple assertion. This is a more uh, a sanity check because what I get back is an array of requests. And I just want to know if there's at least one element in it. And if it's not, something is afoot and I want to fail early. And then I do something to build up the expected body. And the actual body I can get from the request. So I get the first element of the array. And so you get body a string. And the bottom line is actually a JSON assert asserting that both bodies are in essence the same JSON document. Good. Enough code on slides. Let's have a look at some real code. Yes. So what you see here, um, this is the demo code. It's also on GitHub. I will share the link later so you can look it up at your own pace if you want to. Here, there's actually two folders. Uh, the game service. And uh, that just holds the code of the game service, not really interesting. But what is of interest that I want to show the, you there is in the domain package, there's a game service class that's actually at the core of the, of the domain. This, so this is providing 99% of the behavior of the full microservice. The rest is just uh, details of the domain and uh, the clutter around it to make it a microservice. And what I did is I created a test for that. Oh, it's already open. So this is just a standard test. It's JUnit 5, Mokido, not a lot else. And uh, the reason why I'm showing you this, because if I run this, it will actually do the internal validation of the behavior. And as you see, got some output here. So a couple of tests, let's see. The order is mixed up, so I have to look up what I was looking for. Um, okay, so this is the first, uh, the first one in the file that actually says, okay, when a game is started, it must be persisted. This is internal, so I'm interested in that. And it must be in progress, because it's really confusing when I start a new game that it's already finished. And I'm showing you this because what I actually did and to create the component test is start out by copy-pasting all that and then combining it out so that I got a structure for myself to say, okay, if these are the tests that validate my functionality uh, internally, then it must also be uh, a close match for what I expect externally. So let's free up some room here. And what you see here is the same test but a slight difference, I'm not interested at all about the persistence from the outside. Go manage game services, I don't care. But it must be in progress. And this is actually, uh, well, I think pretty similar to the code you saw on slides. So I say, okay, generate a mock. When you get a get request on slash generate, uh, well, return a 200, create some code. And then below here, uh, I'm actually uh, executing the test itself um, uh, using REST Assured. A little bit abusing REST Assured here as an easy REST client to use. And later on, simple assertion that the status of the game is really in progress. And of course, I want to know that it came up uh, uh, with that by actually generating a code. And also I want to know that it didn't do anything else. So let's see if all is well. If I click this, 
it will run. Oh, okay. Let's see. I'll do it again with a little more space for the console. Oh, well, you can catch up. Well, you see, uh, it's uh, spinning up uh, three containers with mock server. Then it's spinning up uh, the container built for my Docker file. And then it's executing the tests. So everything was successful. And well, it says it took eight seconds. Well, I think maybe the first one has a little bit of overhead uh, from starting up. But you see, the, the amount it takes to execute these tests is not really huge or exceptional. So it's pretty, pretty useful. Um, and uh, this way, I tested my microservice in the same, uh, with the same setup as uh, I did for the internals. So. Let's see. Wrapping up. Mocking services helps test isolation. So if you mock your microservice that you depend on, you can run your tests in isolation. And that's important because test isolation in turn helps autonomous teams. If I can pretend the world around me is there, whether it's not or not, uh, whether it is or not, I can work uh, at my own pace without too much relying on the other teams. Of course, it makes no sense to sprint ahead and create all kinds of services where the dependencies are missing. Um, but you're also not really dependent on the other team in the sense that you need to walk over to some desk of a colleague and say, "Hey, I thought uh, service B was running there, and it's down, and or it's." responding differently, or you didn't really implement that interface that we agreed upon. You don't have those issues uh, initially. And mock server can help to mock services. Because uh, when I talk about mock server, either in private or in a conference room, the first question I get after that is, but what about, and then it's mostly wire mock or some other alternative. Well, the answer is, if that works for you, it also works for you. I was just here presenting uh, a tool that I like and hope you like it too. And with that, I've reached the end of my talk. Uh, there's some QR codes below there to get some more information. Uh, I had all the URLs up there and it was even more messy. So I chose this setup. Uh, you can find the demo on GitHub uh, to check it out at your own pace. You can find uh, some more information about mock server, test containers I used, a uh, little bit of rest assured came by and JSON assured, and of course visit the site of my employer, it will greatly help them. Thank you all. <laughs>